One thing I want to do is say a big, big, big thank you to our chair, Sharon. Sharon Christian is phenomenal, amazing. She likes to be behind the scenes, but she did a fantastic job orchestrating all of this and making sure that we could all be here today. So thank you for that. And we're going to move along and let Erica come on up and talk about this raffle. Hey again, everyone. So I want to thank everyone again for coming to day one of CMC Schoolcraft Virtual Summit. And before Dr. Mark Houston gives our closing remarks for the day, I want to quickly announce our raffle winners. Um, the book Two Cultures by C.P. Snow was won by Clea, and appropriately, our fun math mug was won by Taylor, and the Lego kit was won by Cecilia. So congratulations to all our winners, and I will be in contact with you soon. I'm going to send it back over to Kayla. Yay, congratulations, winners. Those look like such fun prizes. And finally, we have Dr. Mark Houston cl to close us out. Hold on. Okay, can you guys hear me? <laughs> Sorry about that. There's a delay. So. Let's see. I want to, I'm, not, I'm in the light here. So thank you everyone again. This is fantastic. Uh, it's really quite the event. And I just wanted to stress a couple things about this theme. So it's bridging the arts, humanities, and sciences. And the sort of notion for that idea really does come from the, the book you just rambled off, which is a, a famous work by C.P. Snow. Now, C.P. Snow uh, was trained as a physicist, and he was also a novelist. He worked primarily for the British government. He was eventually knighted, so he's in fact Sir C.P. Snow. And in 1959, he did what are called the Reed Lectures, which were a series of lectures at Cambridge that go back actually older than our country to the 1600s. And that lecture then turned into a book that became called The Two Cultures and the Scientific Revolution. Uh -oh. And that, that phrase, scientific revolution, is, is quite significant as well. But what I will, I would like to emphasize is this idea that we have a worry, which is that the arts and the sciences are somehow in separate spheres. And this is a worry very much expressed by C.P. Stone. It actually started a very long discussion about precisely what is the relationship between the sciences and the technology. Now, interestingly, in when C.P. Snow first gave this talk, one of the problems that he had was he thought that the sort of literature folk were looking down upon the scientists and that the world thought the science of the scientists and technocrats not particularly interesting. And so they were sort of the lesser of the two. As I say, if anything, this is sort of reversed over time where, where science, I mean, even think about the fact that we had to turn STEM to STEAM, right, to, to reemphasize the arts, the liberal arts. But the fact of the matter is these things have always worked together to try to create a sort of view about how we make sense of the world. And no single scientist, no single humanist can do it by themselves. And to bring us home, I, I'd like to give you a quote by a uh, very famous, one of the most important philosophers in the world, Immanuel Kant. So he has this, this line where he says, there are, are two things that give him sort of eternal awe, the starry skies above him and the moral law within him, right? The idea of looking outward and what science and technology can help us make sense of in the world, but of course the moral law within us, which is this phenomenological subjective aspect to our lives. And there's no reason to make discoveries or to use technology if it's not to somehow try to make our lives better. But of course, that can only be guided by us, people that are humanists who try to understand morality and creativity and art. And then when you blend the two is when you start to have a real chance to make some progress in the world, both as an individual and as a society. And we know there's all these problems going on, but, but when you have people who can 
talk about worries of addiction, that, that sort of humanity that corn brings us, or the anxiety that math can cause it, which is a very legitimate concern, right? The, the anxiety can freeze you up in a way that doesn't allow you to go forward, right? Or the work of, of Kamya, who, uh, the art, that was fantastic, right? This blending of music and, and, and artwork is really great. And of course, we have Garrett sort of tracing this long history for us of, of our understanding of religion and how that starts thousands of years ago and now relates to us even to this day. And of course, we have, um, you know, Legos, which honestly, I've never seen anyone more geared towards a career in engineering than someone who builds a Lego set taller than them when they're a kid. And, and, uh, and of course, that goes well with the uh, rocket uh, design. And then finally, we, we end with this really prescient and timely talk on zoonotic disease, which, of course, is the primary mode of trans disease transference. But again, who cares unless you care about people and our place in it, which is the human side, the art side. And so it's incredibly important to understand this bridge and how we need to keep constantly bringing back together. And I'm doing the closing remarks tomorrow, and I may talk, I'll, I'll say something different so you don't get a complete repeat of this. But I think one of the reasons that there has been a divide is in part due to the nature of how the university developed, particularly starting in the 1800s with the German model of the university as a research university. And what this created was a series of specialists. And then as the specializations get more complicated, it forces us to get a kind of tunnel vision. Now, of course, you have to become a specialist to do well in, a, in an area, but you always have to keep in mind there are a lot of other areas to be aware of. And when you're aware of them, you recognize that it's that totality that allows us to even have a chance of making progress and addressing major problems and being better as a human as human beings. And the great thing is, I think conferences like this are a tremendous start, seeing students do work in all these areas, caring about this stuff, taking it seriously, whether it's going to be their profession or not. That gives you hope, right? So if you have despair, these are the things that should give you hope. And I hope you have some. So um, I think that's about it for me. And uh, I will hopefully see you tomorrow. <laughs> so I, I'm happy to answer questions, but I don't think it's really for me to be answering questions for great students. So, okay. Take care, everyone. Someone else taking over? <laughs> Are we done? I can pop back in just to say okay. goodbye. <laughs> um, appreciate everyone for coming. Please come back tomorrow. We have more presentations signed up for you. Thank you all for being here and have a great, great evening.